Hi everybody, I'm Nate from The Kramer Life. And Katie. Also from The Kramer Life. And today we thought we would try to beat this storm that's brewing, oh dear. <laughs> and we were gonna go explore the property. We have some updated information about the age of some of the buildings. And many of you have requested that we do a tour and show a property map of where things are so you guys can get a better sense. So this is homestead property search. <laughs> our homestead <laughs> <laughs> right all right so we're going to start right here and this is kind of our base of operations so we do have the rv trailer and this is currently still where we're staying we have the 1930s house right over here is a carport now what we're going to do is as we're displaying these buildings and showing the layout on the screen here i'm going to be putting the year in which they were built Let's go ahead and jump on the electric lawnmower. We'll make our way over to the first barn of the property. A first thing to note here is we have a small garden right here to the east of the house. We are heading east right now. And then we also have some chicken coops over here. And we're gonna do a uh, operations video, the operations of the homestead at a later date. I'll put a link to the video once we have it, to this video, just in case you're seeing it later. It's very difficult to hang on to this to try to stay stationary with the camera. I know. So this area is the area that we cleared. Yes. We had a gentleman with a uh, compact track loader and a brush cutter and then a forestry mulcher come in and clear a lot of these trees and things are still now starting to uh, grow back up. Uh, out here is our gray barn. This barn we believe was a tobacco barn originally, as you can see in here with the structures. It has all of the posts that the tobacco sticks would have hang, hung the tobacco from. We're not sure exactly what we're gonna use this barn for, but we do like it and we do plan on keeping it. We try to at least keep one path mode from the barn to the 1970s house. This house was built in 1970, oh, was it 73 or 75? I think it was three. We'll, we'll put it down below, of course. We did a tour of the inside of this house a few episodes ago, and I'll put a link to that if you wanna see what's inside the house. We also have a machine shed, and this, I believe, was also built about the same time that that house was brought onto the property. So we also did a video tour walking through this machine shed. It looks and is built very similar to the tobacco barn, and it does have some of the same posts. So in addition to housing the machinery, they could have also used it as drying tobacco. We're not 100% sure with all of the uses. This would have been the driveway originally. So you would have come up here with your vehicle. And you would have pulled into your beautiful garage. Well, it's collapsing. This is one of the, sh the buildings on the property that is not salvageable. All right, we've made it back to the house. Looks like the storm has passed. So we're gonna continue our property tour now. We're gonna head down to the other barns and down to the creek. Are you ready? Yep. Let's do it. 
So you'll notice on our left as we pass, this is current setup for our free range and our temporary coops for our flocks where we have the sheep and also where we have the pigs. Right now the pigs are in a uh, smaller temporary paddock because just a few days ago they found a way to escape their large paddock of about two, maybe three acres uh, along the fence line between us and the neighbors. So that's on the next, that's on the to-do list of repairing that and putting them back into their larger paddock. I'm gonna go on warp speed. Ready? Yep, go up on this hill up right here to avoid that big bump. just right there and bark at the neighbors. So we're trying to keep them away from the fence line. And we'll stop here at the foundation. First stop on the tour. So this is the foundation for the 1930s house where it was originally built on the property. We believe it was moved from here to where it currently resides in the 1950s. Yeah, we don't know exactly why they moved the house from this location to where it is, but we assume it's because water. it had access to city water and uh, electricity. This structure, we believe, was the original smokehouse for the building. So as you can see, it's got a metal latch and then it's got two wooden latches as well. And we were told that the reason they put one so high up is so that kids can't come in here and accidentally leave the door open and forget to latch it so that the animals didn't come to get the, the food that was hanging in here. We were also told the reason that these boards are so warped was because most likely the salt used to cure the meat uh, and the smoking process. building here is the corn crib where they would have stored their corn grains for humans and for animals. This building unfortunately has settled quite a bit and it is down into a little bit of a dip so it has the rain has washed it away. So you, you'll notice the proximity between the 1930s house, the smoke house, and the corn crib are really close to each other. So this is what we're calling the red barn for obvious reasons. This building was used for both animal and hay storage. So there's feeding stalls on both the right and the left hand side. At the top structure, there would have been a spear that came down to pick up the bales of hay, raise it up to the top loft and take it to the back. And then along each of the exterior sides, there was the ability to just drop hay down to feed the animals. The 
This is the very first barn that was built on this property. It was built in 1922, and unfortunately, starting to see some of the last of its days. But it was used as a tobacco barn, and we're, we're saying that because of the beams that you're seeing up there. They would hang tobacco off of those beams with tobacco sticks. There are a lot of materials here that we do plan on repurposing. So some of the siding will reutilize for the gray barn. And then the posts and the beams inside are in excellent condition still. And we're hoping that we can reutilize that when we look to build a cabin or another structure. This is the final building that is still standing that we know about on our property and we're not sure what this building was originally. There's a lot of speculation because of uh, the grain mill and some of the other buildings that this could have been an old storefront or grain storage, but it's definitely an interesting, an interesting build of a building because you've got this, these two entrances on this side, on the lower portion off of the road, and then you do have access around the other side at the on the top floor. made it to our favorite place on the property, the creek. This rock formation that you're seeing right here was used as a dam for the grain mill that's probably 800 feet down creek. And this is one of the collection points where they would bring water from the creek to the water wheel of the grain mill. The grain mill was operational until 1920, and it was built in 1800. All right, the reason that we came back up here is because... We'll go in a little bit. Okay. The road that we're now on, this was the original road... Oops. ...towards the grain mill. And like we said, it goes about 800 feet down this road that's now uh, starting to become overgrown, but it is traversable during fall and winter and the beginning of spring. Our property probably has about 25 more acres back here of woods and all sorts of crazy terrain. Since we're not ready to start improving that area, we're leaving the animals, nature, everything back there and kind of letting the forest just be the forest. That little indention that you see right there, right in front of this building, that was the original road to the mill. The mill. The wagon road. Yeah, and given that it was the 1800s to the 1920s, it would have been wagons, and then maybe even at some point motorized, uh, early um, motorized vehicles. Oh, it may seem like the buildings were pretty far away from each other, from what we first started with, with the two houses and the gray barn. But just for reference, this red barn, if you were to just look straight through these woods and imagine this was back in its glory when this used to be pasture, you have a straight shot to the gray barn. 
So you would have had your beautiful pasture with either your crops or where your animals grazed, and you would have had a barn on either side. We wanted to just share a little bit of a layout and how everything is organized on the property because as we're taking you all around, it can get a little confuse, confusing. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour yep. and we'll see you next time. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye.